What's up everybody, Dre right back at it again with another update video on 83. It has been quite a bit since I talked about this game, so those of you that don't remember what that game is, it is a game that is being created by the developers of Killing Floor 2 and the Rising Storm series. It's a game that is to take place in the Cold War. It's one of the reasons why I am really interested in this game is because, you know, there's not that many games that really take place in Cold War, aside from another game that I'll probably talk about sooner or later. But yeah, let's get into the information that was released just a couple of days ago. We are going to be looking at a video called 83 Through the Gun Sights, Weapons, and Webcam. So let's go ahead and get into it here. We get a glimpse at what looks like a brand new map. Looks like in some kind of countryside here. And man, it looks pretty gorgeous. Looks like we only get two shots of the same area, but it looks really good. Like a lot better than what uh, Rising Storm 2 had to show. I mean, it is an upgrade of the engine, so it makes sense. Moving on to the next scene here, they show off an upgraded version of the Sten Gun. I'm not sure what version this is. If somebody wants to tell me down below, hopefully they tell me in the video. But it looks pretty good. I mean, again, I'm not a gun nut, so I don't know if this is correct. I've heard that a lot of people say that a lot of the weapons and things that are actually featured in a lot of these trailers are very inaccurate so i'm curious to know if they're actually going to fix those things like i wonder if these things are all just like placeholders for that era so let's go ahead and move on here the next scene we see a dude running with the weapon we can't really see what it actually looks like but it kind of reminds me of like a grenade launcher the one that they used in vietnam that only shoots one round and then you have to reload it that's what it kind of looks like to me but they never actually show it because it cuts to the next scene the next scene shows either a different map or the same map i can't really tell but it's a bit foggier and has more trees like this looks more like a forest than what we saw previously and then it gets into the title screen here and then we see some talking heads i believe all the people that are actually talking in this video are talking from their home because you know of the covid19 thing again this is a friendly message from durag be sure to stay safe out there wash your hands wear some gloves wear your face mask i'm not sure when this is going to end but anyways the first guy who is the executive producer talks about how the studio is fortunate enough to have the equipment to develop at home so even though they're forced to stay home you know they're still able to work on the game he says that they made a lot of breakthroughs since the last time that they posted and they thought that they would want to show off some of the things that they've been doing so they pass it over to a guy who is the design director and he talks about weapon handling and combat. Then the camera cuts to more of the landscape and then it actually shows off the weapon, which I believe was that grenade launcher that was used back in Vietnam, which I believe is called the M79 grenade launcher. Uh, he does name the Sten machine gun. It's called the L2A3 Sterling Sten machine gun. That's what it's called. He says that it's effective at short to medium range and fires nine millimeter rounds from a 34 round side magazine. He says that this weapon is going to be used by, you guessed it, the British side on the NATO side. Moving on, there's a part in the video where they show off the running animation and to be honest it looks really goofy i kind of hope that they improve on that because it seems like the dude has a bit of a problem but anyways he goes on to talk about if the player is going to be able to brace weapons against structures and objects and the answer is yes you can all you need to do is move out to an object and enter iron sights and look for a little glow that's at the bottom of the screen that means that you are now braced to that cover doing this allows you to reduce your weapon sway from breathing and moving as well as give you a slight reduction to recoil they say that if you don't have a place to actually take cover then there is a second option if you're out in the open and there isn't any cover then there's a key that you can hold to exhale and it allows you to zoom in a little closer it briefly allows you to steady the weapon and take the shot so it's very reminiscent of what squad has basically and ready or not now i think about it but keep in mind that your gun has recoil so that means that any time that you shoot your aim is going to be displaced every time so it's probably best just to stay in cover and use the cover as a way to keep your weapon straight straight. He then talks about sight realignment effects, where if you move your gun around, your sights will stay in the middle, but the rest of the gun will move. It does like a bit of a sway effect is what's happening. He says here that in 83, bullets will actually come out of your barrel and not out of the middle of the screen. I'm assuming he's referring to Rising Storm 2. When he says that, I, I can't say for sure if that was a thing in that game. But anyways, if your sight is in fact out of line and it's like looking upwards, the bullet will go wherever your gun is aiming. So you want to keep as much of a steady aim as possible if not your bullets won't miss its targets now obviously if you're firing single shot and you're out of cover recoil shouldn't be too much of an issue but obviously if you're going automatic your bullets are going to start climbing the only way to compensate for that is to pull back on your mouse which i mean is pretty common practice by a lot of these tactical games at this point so long as you're doing that then you should be fine for the most part and yeah he then goes on to talk about a feature that i'm not entirely sure was present in rising storm 2 but i'm assuming that it is but it's 
it's a mechanic where you basically hold R to check to see how much ammo you have inside of your weapon. There aren't very many games that do that. I think only two come to mind, that being Escape from Tarkov and uh, Ready or Not. So it's really cool to actually see this here. They seem to be adding a whole lot when it comes to reloading here, like being able to interrupt the reload. So say that you check your ammo and you realize that your mag is really low. Well, then you reload, you tap R to reload. But if you decide to run in the middle of reloading, then your guy won't reload his weapon with another mag. You have to wait until the weapon is actually fully loaded before you can actually, you know, start killing people again. That's another mechanic that's pretty rare. He then shows off that you can actually still have a bullet left in the chamber, and that if you're reloading your gun, you can still shoot that one bullet that's in the chamber as you're reloading. Pretty neat. This also has a bit of a consequence to it because if you're reloading and there's still a bullet left in the chamber, you can actually shoot the guy next to you. The bullet goes wherever the barrel is pointed. So if your barrel is pointing off to the left and you fire it, then it's gonna shoot that way. So you have to watch your trigger finger in this game. So at this point, he puts the mag bag into the weapon and then he shows off a new mechanic. This is known as the tactical reload where you basically double tap R to do a fast reload and it drops the mag and he puts in a new one. Once you drop the mag, you can't pick it back up, unfortunately. Even if it is a full mag, you still can't pick it up. They describe it as more of a trade-off than an advantage. So if you decide to do a fast reload, you lose your mag and you don't have access to that anymore. From what I understand, you don't get a whole lot of magazines, so you want to use that as less as possible. Only in like tight situations would you ever need to fast reload it. Up next, they switch over to a different weapon, the L1A1 or FAL, to talk about the peep sights. The L1A1 uses peep sights, which are the cause of a common complaint about video game gun sights going back as far as iron sights have actually been a thing in games. Computer screens don't work like the human eye. So the aperture of peep sights is always either realistically sized, but blocks the player's view, or is open right up to a lay to see what you're shooting at, but looks very unrealistic while the weapon is lowered. I think that's honestly a perfect explanation about the whole thing with peepholes. Like, it's such a common complaint that I always see from gun nuts. It's just like, the peephole is too big. But if you don't make it good, then it looks really bad when you're trying to aim in. Like, it just looks like the whole peephole is covering up your thing. So it's like a really good explanation as to why that's always been an issue in the gaming community. Gun peepholes. So what 83 tries to do here is have the best of both worlds. So when you're not aimed in, the peephole looks like it's ridiculously tiny. But when you aim, the peephole becomes big bigger. It's like really trying to like simulate what it looks like when you're actually looking through the peephole. And as you zoom in, it becomes more clear and gives you better sight. So I think that that's a really cool thing right there. I can definitely see that they're actually trying to make the best of both worlds. They then acknowledge that not a lot of people like it when you aim in and then hold shift to like zoom in even further. What they're going to do is add an option for you to use like some sort of a slider so that you could just automatically go into the most zoomed in version of the gun. I personally like that there's two different options to be honest like i use the first one for close quarters and then i use the second one if they're a bit far away so i mean i guess it's the best of both worlds is that the theme for this video hmm. but yeah let's push on here the video switches back to the executive producer and he talks about some tools that they're using to make really good looking maps and big maps but the crazy thing that they say here is that the maps aren't finished which i'm just like what damn these things look really good these are like some really good looking maps can't wait to see what they look like when they're actually done it's gonna be interesting and then he goes on to talk about what factions are going to be included in the game as soon as the game actually launches. So along with the British and Russians, he brings out a new faction, the US. I'm just trying to look at all the weapons that they have. We have two guys that are holding the M1911s, uh, the M16, and the M60, I believe that is. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not great with guns. The Americans are going to feature two different uniforms, one for summer and one for winter periods, which is pretty cool. And he says that it goes without saying that everything here is a work in progress, but I, I mean, I really like what I'm seeing, I gotta say. I mean, this team has been relatively quiet but at least they drop a video every now and then and i can actually see the progress on the videos so it seems like they've come a long way from last i checked up on them and that's pretty much the video yeah there was quite a bit of stuff here actually from a new weapon to reloading mechanics and new gun mechanics big maps and a brand new faction that's nuts in a seven minute video i honestly can't wait to play this game what are your guys' thoughts is this definitely something that you're gonna hop into i mean i'm not sure when it's supposed to come out but it looks really promising so yeah tell me what you think down below if you're someone that enjoys the fact that I cover games like 83, why don't you go ahead and like the video, comment down below, and share the video. If you're someone that's new, go ahead and subscribe and ding the bell. Stick around a little, maybe you'll find something you like. If you're someone that really wants to invest in the channel, why don't you go ahead and check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye